Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow missile from the United States military. Please turn to like and subscribe. Alright, Fact 1. Short Range System Compared to many missile systems out there, especially shipborne ones, the RIM-7 is actually a short range system primarily intended to defend against anti-ship missiles. It's definitely not being used to attack a land target or other targets. It's mostly for defense when an incoming missile is trying to hit the ship, they launch this missile to take it out. And as a result, it's a very short range system. The operational range is only 10 nautical miles or 19 kilometers. So as you can see, this is for sure a defensive system ready to intercept any incoming anti-ship missiles that could put the ship in jeopardy. This is definitely not an attack system because otherwise the ship would have to be so close to the target that itself would be under attack. And so it's definitely a primarily defensive mechanism. Alright, fact 2, derived from the AIM-7. The United States military actually researched and developed the RIM-7 straight from the AIM-7 missile that's air-to-air -air because they needed to develop something quickly to protect ships. They simply took the AIM-7 Sparrow air-to-air -air missiles and quickly retrofitted to fit ships as quickly as possible. The US military really wanted to have something as quick as possible to replace the gun-based anti-aircraft and anti-ship systems. And so they pretty much took the existing components of the AIM-9 Sparrow and made it a naval version. And so you can see the name is also very similar. It carries the same number and it's really just called Sea Sparrow instead of just Sparrow. It shares mostly the same components in terms of propulsion systems and guidance systems as the AIM-7. I think it's always best to do something like this because now you can leverage on the research and development of an entirely different program and system and leverage it to build something tailored to your specific need without a full-blown R&D trials and developing from scratch. This can shorten and accelerate your time to deployment very quickly. Alright, Fact 3, Ground-Based Adoption. Despite the name Sea Sparrow and as I mentioned mainly an anti-ship system, there's one country in the world that actually uses this for ground-to-air defense, and that is Taiwan. Taiwanese military actually adopted the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow for ground-based launch application. Here, you can see this is the system that they came up with called the RIM-7 Surface-to-Air Launcher. The name they gave it is called the Skygar Shorad System. 500 missiles enter service since 1991 and more are being deployed. There's also another country using the RIM-7 Sea Sparrow for a ground-to-air application and that is the Ukraine. As of January 2023, the Ukrainians are using this missile and retrofitted to Soviet-era missile launchers in order to accept them and use it to fire them. Alright, let's get into the next fact. Fact 4. Evolution to the RIM-162 ESSM. Being that the Sea Sparrow system is pretty old from the 1970s, the United States military continuously to upgrade and use the latest technology to retrofit this system. The ESSM system, or called Evolved Sea Sparrow Missile, is really its own missile in its own right. It takes existing guidance systems on the RIM-7, but has an entirely new rear section. The new missile is 10 inches in diameter instead of the previous 8 for a much more powerful motor. It also eliminated the mid-mounted wings and replaced it with long fins similar to other standard missiles. It also moves the guidance control to the rear fins. 
The tail base steering of the ESSM uses much more energy, but offers considerably higher maneuverability when the engine is firing. Because the missile is so different from the RIM-7, it got its own designation of RIM-162. And so you can think of this as a lineage, if you will, where the RIM-7 is derived from AIM-7, and the RIM-162 is derived from the RIM-7. For them to continually evolve in this manner, again, saves so much money on research and development, as well as time to deployment, because using what already works removes unnecessary trials and can put something into production, into operational field, as fast as possible. All right, let's get into the next and final fact. $165,000 per missile. The RIM-7 is not a cheap missile. Each time an operator presses the fire button, they launch a $165,000 missile. And as I mentioned in the first section, this missile is mainly for anti-ship and defense. And so if it misses its target, they need to quickly launch another one and another one. And in fact, in order to really assure destruction of incoming missiles and aircraft, it is likely that every time an incoming target is identified, they launch more than one of these. And so you can see the cost really adds up. In fact, the launchers are all mostly quad systems, meaning that there's always multiple missiles in a particular pod. This tells me that the missile is not a 100% accuracy type of missile and requires multiple of them to make sure they do their job. And so this system is that by no means a cheap system. When you consider all the costs adds up in terms of firing multiple of these missiles at 165,000 each, you definitely need millions and millions of dollars to operate this. All right, that's it for my video today. Thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. See you next time.